if I'm going to be honest right off the bat, the X13 would be my choice. I'm going to dive into why, but if that's all you needed to know, then links are in the description below if you're ready to make a purchase and you can support this channel. But if you need more details, we're going to dive right in. First and foremost, the battery life is probably the biggest reason. Having a small, thin and light laptop, the whole purpose is to be on the go friendly and the X13 absolutely slays it. As you can see with the battery life results coming up on the screen, it gets double digits in the battery life for productivity and streaming video. Whereas the Swift X gets in the single digits. It just isn't as efficient. And with a slightly thicker package, as you can see the weight and thickness coming up on the screen, just makes the X13 much more on the go friendly. I will say it also looks a lot more professional with the all black simplistic design. I think this blue is very pretty, but it just doesn't have that sleek, thin, creator slash business focused laptop that I personally value. Now, in regards to the screen size, however, we have a 14 inch laptop here with the Acer Swift X, and we have a 13.3 inch laptop with the X13. So you're gonna have a slightly bigger screen on the Swift X if you want that extra screen real estate. Pretty cool though, that you have a two in one laptop here with the X13. So if you're a digital artist, this may be a benefit to you. Now, looking at the inside of of the laptops, you can see they both have simple keyboards. You can control your fan mode here and jump into the ASUS command center right off the keyboard deck on the X13. You can access fan modes on the Acer Swift X. However, it's just simply a function F button rather than having the entire armory crate center on the X13. And the Armory Crate Center is really what gives you that fantastic battery life. You can go into what's called eco mode or you know previously known as iGPU mode where you turn off the dedicated GPU and you access only the CPU. The issue with the X13, and I think one of the main reasons we're getting poor battery life is you're always using that RTX 3050 Ti. So that's where I wish there may be better software in the Acer model. You know, that fan mode really doesn't do all that much to help with the battery life because the GPU is still on. So that's where I see a big benefit for the X13. Now, as I'm looking at the trackpads, they're very similar in size. I feel as if the Swift X might be slightly taller by just the tiniest percent, um, but I do sense that that is the larger trackpad. As you can see though, the uh, size of the laptop here, the chassis is a little bit smaller because of the 13.3 inch laptop. Punch for punch, I think they're great laptops as far as the size, keyboard, and trackpad is concerned. Winning out would definitely be the battery life for the X13. Now, the screens are both color accurate as well. That's a big benefit. They both do have great color accuracy. You have a high sRGB, a good Adobe RGB, and a great DCI P3, and both pretty bright screens. You can see those results on the screen now. Now, to give you a quick audio sample of the keyboard and trackpad, here is that for you now. And they both do come equipped with webcams and here's a quick sample of the webcam so you can see how that looks. This is the webcam on the Acer Swift X14 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. Here is the webcam on the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13 and a little sample of the audio for you as well. And of course, here's an audio sample of the speakers so you can hear the speakers in use as well. Now I will say one benefit that the Acer Swift X does have is it has the i7-1260P, which is a much cooler and quieter processor. So throughout all of the work and the performance results that you'll see later in the video, it remained cool and quiet. I'm gonna pull up the video editing thermal results now for the Acer Swift X and the X13. And as you can see, the X13 got much warmer and a little bit louder during the export time test. 
So if you're going for cool and quiet, I would go for the Acer Swift X. But if you're going for battery life and you don't mind the thermals and a little bit of noise, I would go for the X13. Make sure you subscribe right now. Go ahead, take the two seconds to click that subscribe button. We're trying to reach 100,000 subscribers by Christmas and you could make that happen. Thank you so much if you would just take that little effort, do that and make some dreams come true here and help us reach 100,000 subscribers. So be amazing. Now, ports are something that are important to a lot of people and let's see what we got here. On the Asus Republic of Gamer Flow X13, we of course have the ability to connect an external GPU to give you full access to an RTX 30. 80. So that gives you that connection port for the XG Mobile, as well as if you're not using the XG Mobile, a USB Type-C port, and then you have your HDMI. On the Acer Swift X, you have two USB Type-Cs, an HDMI and a USB Type-A. Now, if we flip the laptops over to the other side, you have your other USB Type-C and your USB Type-A, and then of course you have the USB Type-A on this side with a headphone jack of the Acer Swift X. So similar connectivity on these two laptops. As far as the build quality is concerned, I lean towards the Asus. It just has a nicer fit and better materials. It just feels a little more solid to the touch and the bottom cover is fit into the side panels very nicely. Now looking at the Acer Swift X, it is a good design, it is all aluminum, but just as I look at the bottom panel, it is a little catchy edge there. And I just think that that could be refined a little bit by Acer to give it a little better assembly quality. But overall, a nice aluminum chassis. Without further ado, let's get into the performance benchmarks. And starting out in Geekbench single core and multi-core, you can see that for the single core performance, the Acer Swift X is showing off quite a bit more than the X13. As we move into multi-core performance, you can see that the Swift X, again, with that new i7-1260p processor, is looking like the better of the two laptops. Now, as we go into Cinebench R23 single core and multi-core, once again, the Acer Swift X is pulling off the higher end of the chart. However, in multi-core for R23, you can see that the X13 stands out in that test. But let's not hang around in the simulated benchmarks too long. Let's get into Blender Classroom. And as you can see in Blender Classroom, they are neck and neck in the mid 300s. It's slightly higher score at 370 with the X13. And then the Swift X has the 313. These would not be the best Blender laptops. I think they are definitely capable of Blender, but for Blender, you might want to get something with a little bit more powerful CPU and GPU combination. I would say something like an i7-12700H, an RTX 3060, or the Ryzen 9 6900HS with an RTX 3060. I think the 3050 Ti for all the graphical performance you need in Blender just doesn't quite cut it. Now, looking at 3D modeling, Autodesk 3ds Max, Autodesk Maya, and PTC Creo, as well as SolidWorks, I just don't think that these would be my top picks if I was going for a 3D modeling laptop. Now, if I was somebody on the day-to-day -day that you know stumbled into 3D modeling for time to time, uh, let's say that I am more the business side of a 3D modeling firm, and I might need to pull up some renderings or some source files to show a client. But that's not like my main job. I'm not like working inside of the programs. I think this laptop or both of these laptops could be suitable. But if I'm somebody who it's my main job to do the 3D modeling project, and the renderings and the creation. These would not be my picks, but they are capable of running the programs for sure. Looking at the After Effects benchmarks, these two laptops do have what it takes. They're in the high 600s. I personally, to feel super comfortable with a very powerful After Effects laptop, would want to see the high 7 to 800s, but I think the high 600s are still going to serve you well. You might get a little bottlenecking in some of the more complex tasks, but overall, they'll perform great for your needs. For Photoshop, you're not gonna have any issues. These laptops are in the 800s, which is definitely plenty of performance for Photoshop. So whatever tasks you might be doing, you'll be covered there as well. Now, Premiere Pro Playback, 4K is not gonna be any issues. 6K B-RAW showed quite a bit of drop frames on both of these laptops, as you can see those results coming up on the screen. And then 6K RED footage was quite a bit of a struggle. I would say I would personally vote these two laptops for 4K video editing laptops and maybe some light 6K. I just don't want to over recommend them for 6K because it definitely is kind of at that fine line between maybe a little jumpy unless you bump it down to half or fourth quality, but for 4K you'll have no issues. So that'd be my recommendation. For the 4K export time, they're both in the three minute range. However, the Swift X is getting a slightly better export time over the X13. So really, as you can tell, punch for punch, these two have very similar performance. Even though the X13 has a slightly more higher TDP focus processor, with a little bit more ceiling to it, and then you have the lower TDP processor in the i7-1260P. So as you can see, 
Intel is really pushing a lot of performance at a low TDP, which is awesome to see that we don't need a super hot processor to still get great performance. If it were me and I was using a thin and light on the go laptop below the 14 inch or you know at the 14 inch screen size, I would go for the X13. I just really appreciate that battery life. I don't need that slight bump of performance that I saw in some of the apps in the Acer Swift X. And overall, battery life is gonna be a big part of the decision process for me. So unfortunately, if it were me personally, the Acer Swift X would not beat out the X13 in this head-to-head -head battle. So X13 is gonna be my choice. Comment below, let me know what you think. Which one are you considering picking? Links in the description if you are ready to make a purchase, likes if this video has brought you some value, and subs if you don't wanna miss out on the future uploads. I'll see you here in the next one.